editing with Audacity. So first, and first, <laughs> first, open Audacity, and when you get this screen, that's okay. Just click OK on this. And next, we want to get our file. So let's go to wherever the file is. It's probably on the server folder, and I'm going to drag and drop this to the desktop, and don't need the server folder anymore. And then, I'm just gonna make this big. Go to File, Open, and I'll navigate to my desktop woo, right over here, and I click on the file. It'll usually need, be named your first name. Uh, if I'm recording it, I'll save it in the server folder with your name, and it'll be in a logical folder. In this case, it could be the narration for the Day in My Life project. And just look there and open it up. And this is going to say something about slower but safer, faster but um, maybe a little more risky. It's OK. Just click OK, and it'll open the file. And what I have here is a file. This is a demo of me making a mistake while I'm recording audio. So let's pretend like I am recording and I say something that let's pretend that I'm recording and then I say something that I don't want to say. This is what I was trying to say. This was not. This was the error. Notice I paused right here. So I'm going to just delete this whole section by going like that. Now look closely up here. You can see that I am on the selection tool. This tool allows me to select areas and all I do is hit the delete key. That's it. I'm just cutting stuff out. I'm not really doing anything else. Now another tool that's really helpful is right up here. If you click this tool, it expands out to the width of the screen automatically. Because if you use a magnifying tool and you hold down shift, you can zoom all, all the way out. You can go plus and zoom in really detailed. Now I'm super zoomed in right here. But if I click right here on this tool again, I can zoom back so that it's the width of the screen. That's really helpful. So zooming in and out can, can do that. Now look carefully, because what I just did is I selected to the magnifying glass. I'm now just on the magnifying glass. I have to click back on the select tool, and then I can come back in and select areas. So that's something to be aware of. So essentially, these tools right here, the selecting tool and the magnifying glass, this is really all we're going to use for basic editing. And then this one right here allows us to zoom back out to the full width of the screen. Really, the rest of the stuff on a basic level, you don't need to know anything else about. On a more advanced level, there's all kinds of cool, crazy stuff we can do. But this is just for quick editing. Let me zoom back out. And what I do is I get rid of dead zones. And so if I listen to this while I'm recording audio, let's pretend that I'm recording and then I say something that I don't want to say. In that previous sentence, I didn't finish my thought. So I paused. Then I went back to the beginning of that statement, said it again, and completed my thought. The pause is really important so that I can see where the goobers are. When there's no sound waves, then you can see that there was something that needed to be addressed in editing. So these little dead spots right here where it's totally quiet are really helpful. You can literally just see things. And that's when you can then zoom in and cut things. And if you highlight and hit play, thought. So it plays over just that section. So zooming in and out, cutting out the stuff, creating a natural flow so it sounds like natural conversation. If there's ums and ahs, those can be cut out too. But be careful of over editing because if you cut things too close together, you'll sound kind of like a robot. And so there's a, a natural process of feeling the rhythm of your own conversation. And everybody's different. Just again, the training what we do of speaking in front of a microphone about slowing down, pausing in between sentences, that's going to have a more natural flow, plus it's going to help you in editing. If you're doing dialogue for a movie or something else, it may be different where you're matching up your lips as you're watching a video clip, you're trying to sync things up. Um, and then we do a different type of editing, normally not like this kind of editing. But anyway, hopefully this is helpful. And now let's export our file. So we go to File, down to Export Audio, we have a number of options down here, but I want you to be careful. Um, all kinds of things we can do here. You cannot export MP3s unless you have a special plugin put in there. So we're just going to stick with the default WAV file. This works really well. And it'll work on the Mac. And when I hit save, shoo, let's see here. It says the file already exists. So I want to be careful. It's already on the desktop and I opened it up. What I recommend, I'm just going to cancel out of this for a second. And I like to do edit it. Then I'll save it. And this screen, don't do anything. You don't. You, you could put information in here if you're going to make something for production online or whatever, or not. I'm just going to skip over it. And now it's on the desktop. And it's named Scott Edited. 
Now I can differentiate that from my original file in case I'm listening to the edited file and I notice there's something I over edited or whatever, I can go back to the original and, and work with that. The other thing is I have the original original in the server folder that I can go back to in case I messed up the one on the desktop. And that is how we do basic narration editing on uh, Audacity.